Hey everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and today I'm joined by Connie Tran, who is a product manager at Google. And Connie is going to tell us all about conversion modeling in Google Analytics 4 properties. Thanks for being here, and Connie, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Krista. I'm super excited to be here today to speak a little bit more about conversion modeling capability in Google Analytics 4 properties. So why are we doing this, what it is, and how it impacts your reporting? So let's hop over to the slides and listen a little bit about this. So what is conversion modeling? When we encounter data that is subjected to browser or privacy restrictions, or there's disruption in the customer journeys across devices, the conversions generated are unable to be tied back to any previous channels. Therefore, marketers lose insight into the effectiveness of each channel. This is where conversion modeling comes into play. Conversion modeling uses machine learning to fill gaps in your conversion measurement that may occur because of the absence of identifiers. The model then assigns linkages when your conversion events, such as purchases, downloads, or signed up, cannot be tied to a channel, such as direct, paid search, social, or emails. Model conversions allow for more accurate reporting, so you're not left guessing where your conversions came from, and you can better optimize for your campaign. In order to model for non-observed slides of data here, we actually use data from observable slices where we know behaviors are similar to the unobserved slice. So let's take an example. Let's say you have a portion of conversion that are not observable on one browser type, but can be observed on the other browser types. So our modeling will first then understand the behaviors in the observed measurable browsers, and then we predict the likelihood of the conversion events on the unobservable browser set. So why are we modeling here? Conversion modeling is important because the industry's ability to tie conversions to ads and other channels will continue to decrease. We expect that the availability of individual level identifiers to continue to degrade over time. Previously, we lived in a world of fully observable data where we have cookies, device identifiers. With the changing digital marketing landscape and a focus on privacy safe measurement, data-driven decision-making has become more challenging, but at the same time, a lot more critical to preserve. These changes are pushing the industry to aggregated, anonymized measurement and data collection. As the volume of observable data continue to decrease, the reliance on conversion modeling to provide comprehensive measurement will continue to increase. But keeping in mind one thing, even if all the right infrastructure is in place, there will still be gaps that no one will be able to fill. So let's take a look at some of the signals that we'll be using at. In order to generate prediction, we need to train data on observable slices, right? Using non-sensitive signals from similar sizes of traffic. Each model will have their own methodology that determines what type of signals and how they're used. Here are some of the examples um, of the signals that we actually use, right? So we could have device type. Um, it could be tablet, desktop, or mobile devices. Another signal we're using is conversion type, which could be any event that you think is important, like download, purchase, or an add to cart. It could be the country of where the users are coming from, and it could be the browser types that they're using like Safari, Chrome, or Firefox, et cetera. With modeling, quality is actually a top priority for us. So in order to ensure quality, we use techniques such as holdback validation to check for the accuracy of our modeling. So let's walk through this to see how it works. For example, we have a lot of observable data here, and we then hold back a portion of the observable data, let's say 10 to 20%. We then apply modeling to that portion, and then we compare the output of the portion with modeling and the output of the original observed conversions that we initially held back. This allows us to calibrate for any biases. This is actually a very common methodology in machine learning that allows us to spot inaccuracies and refine our models. Of course, everything here assumes that the data we train on is representative of the data we're modeling from. So the stronger our training data is, which is the data that you are giving us, the more accurate the modeling will be. We also have very rigorous thresholds for reporting. So we only include model conversions in our reporting when we have very high confidence that a conversion actually occurred as a result of an interaction. We always aim to not over-report. So let's take a look at reporting. So when it comes to your analytics reporting, model conversions can be found in conversion reports, advertising workspace reports, and explore reports. So here's an example on a screenshot here. So on the right-hand side, you see here is an example of a conversion report. 
So on our left-hand side panel, you go down to engagement, you drill down into the conversion report, select the conversion type that you'd like to view. So in this case, you see it's an example of a purchase. Here's the purchase in the attribution reports here. You can see all the channels that are attributed to drive your purchase to the website. The conversion number will include both observed and model conversions generated by our machine learning model. If you want to drill down even further, you can select additional dimensions such as Google ad network type to understand further which campaign generates which conversions. Here's an ad example here of an explore report. On the left-hand side panel here, select explore and then you can create any new explore report. Select a dimension that you would like to drill down. So any dimension that is under the attribution group here on the right hand side under the red box, you will have conversions that include model conversions that are generated by our machine learning model. So that's it. That's an overview of the conversion modeling capability within Google Analytics four properties and how it will show up in your report. Thanks, Connie, for walking us through conversion modeling in Google Analytics 4 properties. This is a really exciting feature that really helps us understand our data in a more full way. So with that, thank you very much.